Two years. It's been just over two years since the Steam Deck came out. And when this video releases, it will be around two years since I've had the Steam Deck myself. So let's talk about my experience with it. Yes, I got my Steam Deck in August 2022. I also made a video in November of 2022 about my experience with the Steam Deck then. Link on screen and in the description. Think of this video as somewhat of a follow up. The first thing we should talk about is the new hardware and its competitors. Let's start the thing I got just after the video came out. The official Steam Deck docking station. It's an easy way to connect your Steam Deck to your TV with slots for a USB and an Ethernet cable. It does what it says on the tin. It works well, but there are third party options that work just as well and you can probably find them cheaper. But at this point in time, there's no real benefit to it over third party solutions. Keep that in mind when buying a dock. But the big piece of hardware we got is the Steam Deck OLED, which is a revision to the Steam Deck. The power of the OLED model is the same as the original, but it does have better battery life and options for larger internal storage. But its biggest advantage is of course its namesake with its OLED screen. I don't own one for myself since my Steam Deck is still working, but I'm a big fan of OLED screens since I've had them for several TVs and of course my PlayStation Vita is the OLED model. If my Steam Deck were to say break, I would be picking up the OLED model. But of course the Steam Deck is not the only PC handheld gaming device in town. We got some competition. With some of the bigger examples being the Asus ROG Ally and the Lenovo Legion Go. I must say I don't own either of these, but competition is only a good thing. Hopefully they'll push each other forward. Most of these other handhelds are Windows based compared to the Steam Deck which is Linux based. So if you're really against Linux, these other handhelds might be a good option for yourself. As for me of course it's not been an issue so far. Let's move on to the games. Over these past few years, we've had a lot of Green Tick verified games. We've got some of the biggest games that are Green Tick verified on launch, such as Baldur's Gate 3 and Street Fighter 6 to name a few. But I do feel these Green Tick games might need some higher parameters to be verified. For example, The Last of Us Part 1 was verified on launch and played terribly. But its biggest problem with verified games links into something that's a wider problem for the Steam Deck. And that's its ability to play offline. Being able to play your games offline is a must for handheld systems, since you know you take it with you, and you might not be able to have internet connection in certain places. I will say that the offline mode has improved a bit from the launch of the Steam Deck, but it's still far from perfect. You should be able to play single player games offline on verified games. For example, if you've seen some of my other videos on this channel, you'll know I'm a fan of Persona and Atlas RPGs. These games are verified, but you need to launch the game first online before you can play it offline. Okay, no problem, I'll do that. But it would seem that once is not enough. It will ask you to do it again at some point. My best guess is when the game updates, it might reset the prompt. All I know is when I was out, I had to exit the game connect the Steam Deck to my phone, go online on my Steam Deck, launch the game, exit again, put my Steam Deck back into offline mode to play the game offline. I had to do this for Persona 5 several times. Now imagine you're someone who maybe has no phone data. You can't play the game you want on the go then, can you? In my opinion, verify games should be like buying a game on console. You shouldn't have to do any troubleshooting to play a game. I think doing this will make the Steam Deck more accessible to people not in the PC gaming ecosystem. Speaking of which, the Steam Deck is a great way to cheaply and easily enter that ecosystem. I've spoken to a few people who have done just that. So making the requirements a bit more strict might help with that process. That's really the bulk of stuff I want to cover with my first two years with the Steam Deck. I haven't really played around emulation for a while, so I don't know if there's been any great leaps in that regard. In terms of wear and tear, my Steam Deck is in good condition. The battery life hasn't seemed to deteriorate too much. It still seems roughly close to what it was at launch. But then again, the Steam Deck was never like known for super great battery life, was it? 
So with that, the Steam Deck is still overall good. But probably get the OLED model if you're going to buy one now. Hopefully Valve and other manufacturers keep moving the space forward. And with that, the video is over. You know the drill, like, subscribe, engagement, comments, other things of that nature, I guess. Recommended video will appear somewhere on the screen. Maybe there, here or there. Only makes noise at the end of the video. Blah, 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 blah,